Welcome back. The long-awaited judgment on the matter involving Jonathan Dubula Kwelani and the South African Human Rights Commission is here. Kwelani wrote an article uh, which contained discriminatory remarks about homosexuals which received hundreds of complaints. Last year, the Supreme Court of Appeal overturned the High Court ruling in 2017 that found Kwelani guilty of hate speech and dismissed an SA Human Rights Commission complaint against him. Today's ruling upheld the appeal by the Commission. Uh, the order of the Supreme Court has been set aside also. And the offending statements against the LGBTQI plus community are declared to be harmful and amount to hate speech. Let's now talk to uh, legal expert Rupert Candy. Rupert, thank you so much for making time. Um, your reaction to that judgment out of the Constitutional Court today? Thank you, Clement. I think it's a seminal day for uh, victims of hate speech and unfair discrimination. Uh, the Kualani judgment has been going on for, for close to 13 years. Um, and as you correctly say, the, the, the matter was handed down today by the Constitutional Court. Um, it did uphold the uh, Declaration of Constitutional Invalidity by the SCA. However, it was just in respect of a specific portion of the hate speech provision in the Equality Act, which dealt with hurtfulness. Uh, the other grounds uh, in respect of whether speech is um, uh, harmful, uh, as well as uh, promotes or propagates hatred, hatred has been left as is. So as it stands at the moment, it is a victory um, for, for uh, defenders um, of the right of people to human dignity which is the most important right in the Bill of Rights after, of course, the right to life. Yeah, and there are a lot of people um, that were really looking closely at this judgment because it was going to be a precedent setting. What does it say about especially the rights of minorities and, and, and what, what warning bells is it ringing uh, for those who often want to insult people because they're different to them and then want to use freedom? of speech and freedom of expression as an excuse? Well, the court has confirmed that the right of freedom of expression uh, in terms of Section 16 of the Constitution is valid. So you do have a right to freedom of speech. That has been confirmed. However, there is justifiable limitations. Um, what, is, what the Equality Act seeks to do um, as a piece of legislation, it creates a statutory delict. So that is what our client in this particular matter, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, which was admitted as a friend of the court, argued. Uh, in, in that regard, we, we specifically argued that the right to freedom of expression does have limitations, but the Equality Act, um, it creates what's known as a statutory dealing. So just in as much as somebody may sue somebody for defamation under common law, the Equality Act creates... A, a statute in which you can do the same thing for discrimination and hate speech based on certain grounds, be it race, gender, sex, um, sexual orientation, uh, etc. So in, in that regard, what uh, the, the, the court even expanded uh, the definition uh, to say that even speech which um, is not overt speech, but which may be symbols, for example, which go beyond words, uh, in that regard, they supported the um, argument by the Nelson Mandela Foundation in the old flag case, you'll remember, yeah. Clement, which was a case which, he, which declared that the uh, display, the gratuitous displays of the old South African flag was a form of hate speech on the Equality Act. That has now been supported that even words that go beyond mere words, even symbolism, things like the old apartheid flag, for example, the, the flag of Nazi Germany with the swastika emblazoned thereon, as well as the Confederate flag of the, of the United States may in fact even be considered hate speech. But I must say, uh, Clement, that the opponents of, of, of the limitation of the right to hate speech uh, need to understand that the court has protected the right of speech, which even includes the right to offend or to shock, which I think some, sometimes just gets lost in the debate uh, by people, you know, particularly people in the conservative realm or, or of, of, of the, the social political polit uh, politic of South Africa, you know, who think that, you know, the, the rights of people to, to speak freely are being unfairly infringed, mm -hmm. which is not the case. The court has confirmed that you still have a right to offend, but you don't have a right to 
uh, say, speech which is going to impact on the human dignity of people. And I think that's right, because at the end of the day, that would mean that we must cancel some of the most, uh, you know, some of our favorite comedians, for example. Mm. I mean, if you take probably our best export, Trevor Noah, for example, we know that Trevor pushes the boundaries when it comes to identity politics. He makes fun of every single racial group, for example, or population group in the country. Does that mean Trevor Noah is committing hate speech? No, because he does have the right to offend or shock. Yeah. How do we measure then, um, Rupert, how do, we, how do we measure that I've gone beyond just the right to offend and now I'm even impacting on your dignity? Well, it's an objective inquiry uh, based on the reasonable person test. That's what the court has confirmed today. Um, so you would obviously have to do a, an, a proper analysis of the actual words interpret it according to its ordinary meaning, yeah. but also take into, uh, into consideration the impact that it has on that group's rights, especially in the context of South Africa historically. So, for example, if you look at, you know, historically there have been certain groups in South Africa who have uh, undoubtedly uh, been, been victims of, of oppression and discrimination and hate speech, whether it's uh, uh, black people generically, uh, if you include most of the population, and also, you know, other groups, you know, for example, uh, in this particular matter, members of the LGBTQI plus uh, community, as well as women. There's been a number of cases uh, in, the, um, in the courts over the years, in the equality courts, from magistrate's court level up until the constitutional court, which has discussed these, these particular matters. So it would involve an objective inquiry into determining the, the meaning of the words and yeah. also the history, the historical importance uh, uh, in respect of these various groups. Yeah, what remedies um, does Parliament now need to make? Well, Parliament now has 24 months to uh, deal with the provision in the, in the actual um, section, Section 10 of the Equality Act, uh, specifically in respect of the word hurtful, because the word hurtful um, in that specific section, uh, the court felt was too vague. Uh, we, and it would be an unjustifiable limitation of the right to, to freedom of expression in the Constitution. However, it has still left the other two uh, portions of that section intact. Uh, so, so harmfulness is still there, as well as the propagation and promotion of hatred. So Parliament has 24 months to deal with that. However, I must say, Clement, that it's even gone further to say that you can still go to the Equality Act, the Equality Court, whether at match court level, magistrate's court level, mm. or to a high court uh, in order to protect your rights. But also, you may have an opportunity, without prejudice to those rights under civil law, to uh, refer the matter to the Director of Public Prosecutions uh, for criminal investigation. All right. Thank so you. those who have been waiting for the hate crimes bill to be passed, yeah. uh, I think also a victory for them today. Thank you so much for making time, uh, Rupert. Uh, Rupert Kendi is a legal expert making us uh, make sense of that judgment out of the Constitutional Court today. Still